This is a very sophisticated attack. An organized criminal group is targeting a producer of commodity goods. If you take out the refineries, two or three refineries simultaneously in a small geography, the price of the commodities those refineries produce are going to spike. Hello and welcome to Waterfalls Industrial Security Institute. I'm Andrew Ginter with Waterfall Security Solutions and today we are working through the top 20 cyber attacks on industrial control systems. In this series of videos, we are using the top 20 attacks to compare the strength of two different security postures. One security posture is sort of vintage 2013 best practice, all of the, uh, the advice we were getting in 2013. And the other security posture is roughly that same thing with one change, which is the addition of a unidirectional security gateway at the ITOT interface as the sole connection between the industrial network and the IT network. Today's attack scenario is commodities market manipulation. In this scenario, an organized criminal group is targeting uh, a producer of commodity goods. Now, let's uh, imagine that our target is a refinery producing gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel for local markets. This organized crime ring has you know, some resources. They do this for a living, so they are reasonably sophisticated. And what they do is they exploit unpatched vulnerabilities in internet facing equipment okay they haven't they haven't done the phishing thing they're not stealing any credentials um, they're going in through let's say the web server or some other internet facing server they found a vulnerability they exploit the vulnerability and they get into the the it network so once they're on the it network they're operating the rat remotely they do classic stuff. They steal credentials, they propagate to adjacent machines, they put copies of the rat on multiple machines through the IT network so that they have sort of a, a persistent presence on the IT network. And they look around and they find the firewall that is the interface to the industrial network. Or in our design, it's actually the interface to the industrial DMZ. Now, by this time, they've stolen the, the domain administrator hash, They've taken, uh, you know, they've created their own administrator account on the domain. They're using that account to, to work their will on the IT network. And they use that account to uh, give themselves permissions on equipment in the DMZ because the DMZ trusts the IT Active Directory controller, the Windows domain. And they can use those permissions to upload files to execute files, they can put copies of the rat into machines on the DMZ. And then they repeat. Now the machines in the DMZ, they cannot reach out to the command and control center on the internet. And so what they have to do is take the, uh, the, the rats that they're deploying on the DMZ and connect them to rats on compromised equipment on the IT network. So they daisy chain their communications. They can still see the screens and move the mouse and operate DMZ machines remotely because all of the communications is being daisy chained, is being piggybacked through rats on the IT network. And the rats on the IT network can get out to the internet, even if the rats on the DMZ cannot get there directly. And then again, the industrial network trusts the Windows directory. They can do that step again, find machines where they have permissions to download the rat and execute it remotely and piggyback the, the communications from the industrial network to the rat in the DMZ, to the rat in the IT network, out to the command and control center on the internet. Now they have remote control of the industrial network. They plant a few copies of the rat to give themselves a, a robust, persistent presence. And now they really go to work. They look around, they understand the process. These are people who have studied the refinery or refining at least. And they can download the configurations for the HMI, they can download the configurations for the PLCs, and they can understand these things and they can figure them out. And they find a single target, a single PLC controlling a piece of equipment that is essential to the operation of the refinery. And they reprogram the PLC to misoperate that piece of equipment and they misoperate it in such a way that the piece of equipment fails and they time the failure. They work the, the piece of equipment. They see it starting to wear out with the, 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 the sensor readings. 
they give a false reading back to the HMI saying, it's all normal, it's all normal. And then bang, the piece of equipment fails. And they do this simultaneously in three refineries in a small geography. Now, the thing is, the market for oil, for raw oil, the input to the refinery, the market for oil is an international market. You generally pay the international price for oil, give or take a few dollars of discount in different geographies. But the market for refined goods, for gasoline, for diesel fuel, and for jet fuel, tends to be much more local. You don't ship these products very long distances. And so if you take out the refineries, two or three refineries simultaneously in a small geography, the price of the commodities those refineries produce are going to spike in that geography. These people are criminals. They have been uh, developing a pattern of speculating on the local commodities market, on the futures price for gasoline, diesel fuel, and jet fuel. And because they've developed a history of this kind of speculation, where they make a little money, they lose a little money, but you know they never win big, it's not real suspicious when three refineries go out and a bunch of speculators, the bad guys included, win big because they've gone long for a, a short period of time on the, uh, the price of gasoline, the price of diesel fuel, the price of, of uh, jet fuel. And so they profit enormously and there's really no one to point a finger at. Once they've caused the physical damage, they undo the programming to the PLC. They erase their tracks. They back out of the system. So now there's no evidence they were ever there. And now, who's going to point a finger? The, the engineers go look at the equipment and say, it wore out. Why didn't it wear, you know, why, why didn't we get any warning of this? And they go look at their systems and the systems are all working normally and they're scratching their heads and they don't know why they didn't get any warning, but they replace the equipment. It takes a week or 10 days long enough for the commodity price to spike, long enough for the bad guys to make a lot of money. Everything comes back after 10 days, prices go back to normal, and this is repeated again in a year or six months. They do this at a period of high demand for these commodities. It might be the summer travel season, it might be, I don't know, Christmas or Thanksgiving, but they do it when they know there's normally a bit of a spike in these commodity prices. And if you cripple the supply, you're going to see a substantial spike. So in terms of sophistication, uh, this is a very sophisticated attack. Um, Engineering-wise, they have a deep understanding of their target, how the physical process works, how to cause a physical failure, how to do it at the right time. They have a moderate understanding of cyber attack techniques. They have not um, you know, found their own zero days and exploited them. They might have waited for a, uh, a zero day or a, a software vulnerability to be announced by a vendor and use the window between the announcement and the time that the patch is installed because there tends to be at least a multi-hour if not multi-day window. They've taken advantage of that window in the IT systems to plant their rat. And then even if the vulnerability is fixed, it's too late. The rat's already there talking to the command and control center. All they need is a window of a couple of hours for a, an unpatched system. And a lot of these vulnerabilities, when they're announced, include proof of concept exploits that they can take advantage of to plant their rat. Consequences wise, well, for the businesses running these refineries, uh, it's costly to be down for, for a week or 10 days. Um, you know, a large refinery might, might be producing $50 million worth of goods a day. So we're talking a big hit to these businesses who are operating these multi-billion dollar investments. So it's a serious consequence. Um, and people you know, generally ask me, um, with this scenario, does it reflect anything we've seen in the world? Well, we've seen each of the techniques. We've seen people take advantage of zero days in internet-facing devices. We've seen them plant rats. We've seen them daisy chain the rats through industrial networks into, you know, through a DMZ into the industrial network. We've seen all of this. Um, what we have not seen to date, there's been no report of the commodities market manipulation. Um, so I made up that part of it. But you have to ask, is this happening already and we're just not seeing it because these people are covering their tracks so well? We don't know. Let's look at our security programs. We're using this attack to compare the strength of security of these two programs. Does the 2013 antivirus, security updates, encryption, firewalls, jump posts, intrusion detection, do any of these measures reliably defeat this class of attack? 
I submit that they do not. This class of attack exploited a known vulnerability in an internet-facing service on the IT network that was exposed for a couple of hours. This is normal on IT networks. It did not take advantage of any known vulnerability, because I've said we're right up to the second with patches on the industrial network. However unlikely that seems, that's what we've postulated. But once they got into the IT network, they used the rat. They used permissions to propagate the rat. They used permissions to push the rat through the firewall into the DMZ and through the, from the DMZ into the industrial network. And so they didn't need more vulnerabilities. The security update program doesn't save us. They used a rat they had tweaked and recompiled so it no longer matched antivirus signatures, so the antivirus didn't save us. You know, intrusion detection might have caught them on the industrial network, might have caught them on the IT network. It might not. It depends on how busy the, uh, the, the security operation center is, how many other sites they're watching, what other kinds of nasties, ransomware they have going at other sites. You know, it depends. Sometimes this class of activity might be seen as a, a, an intrusion and trigger an incident response. Sometimes it might just go unnoticed because there's too much else that's a high priority going on. So again, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, means we do not reliably defeat this class of attack. The 2013 posture does not reliably defeat this class of attack. The unidirectionally protected posture does reliably defeat this class of attack. Why? Because it's a remote attack. They're using rats. If there is physically no way, and the unidirectional gateway physically prevents any information getting into the DMZ or the industrial network. If there's physically no way to get that rat into the network through this, this network remote control attack, you know, and even if the rat is planted in the industrial network, the unidirectional gateway is not a router. It cannot route information from the, the rat into the IT network. It certainly can't route it out to the internet. And even if it could route that information out, there's no way to get commands back into the rat to control it, to find the PLC, to reprogram the PLC. So there's physically no way to propagate this attack into the industrial network. It's a remote attack. And so the unidirectionally protected security posture reliably defeats this class of attack. So here's what our scorecard looks like. Uh, the unidirectional gateways are pulling ahead. Um, these, the modern attack pattern is remote control attacks. And uh, the unidirectional gateways simply prevent those kind of remote control attacks. That's what I had for you. Thank you for joining the Industrial Security Institute. Um, a reminder to download our white paper on the Waterfall website, the top 20 cyber attacks on industrial control systems, if you're interested. Thank you for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe, would you please? Thanks.